Hey everybody, this is Master Gallon guys. I'm bringing you my review of Invincible Iron Man number seven. Now, I'm really glad of the direction Bendis has been going with Iron Man since he started on it because the last couple of years it's been kind of Tony acting like a dick or a villain most of the time since at least Civil War. But now we kind of get that fun Tony that we see in the movies with Robert Downey Jr. So, where this issue continues off is more of the exploration of the Mary Jane Watson introduction into Iron Man's world. Now everybody's like, but she's usually with Spider-Man. What's kind of the deal here? Well, I think that's kind of what we're trying to see. Like, she has a different effect on Tony. With Pepper, you kind of know their dynamic. This, she's supposed to kind of like run his company, and she's even talking to him about that. And he's like, I don't want to deal with your shit. But he's like, listen, I how my brain works, I've already had this conversation, and I'm like two parts on like my outline ahead of you. So I need you to kind of like rein me in sometimes when I need that. And it was really cool kind of seeing her go through the Stark building and also the Hall of Armors. Um, I've really been starting to get used to the artist here because they switched up artists from the beginning because the first artist had to go work on Civil War II. But I'm really liking what they've been doing with their faces and also the armors because if you don't have good faces and you don't have good armor in the Iron Man comic book, you're like, that's part of the draw. you got to be able to draw that armor well because sometimes you get an artist that does one well over the other, like doing faces well but not so well in armor, and some doing really good on the armor. You're like, yeah, but then your face is like, I can't tell if you're Pepper Potts or someone else. Like if you had Pepper, Black Widow... And Mary Jane Watson in the same room, you'd be like, I have no idea who's talking right now. But you don't have that issue with this book. And it was really kind of cool to get the interplay between them. And Tony's introducing Mary Jane to his AI Friday. He's like, I have not been able to get in contact with Rhodey. He's like, oh, crap, where was he last seen? Uh, this part in Tokyo. Is it Peter Parker around that area? And then he's like, okay, can we get in contact with him? Uh, he's not picking up, and then Mary Jane's like, well, I've got his emergency contact number. <laughs> and then that leads to a hilarious little bit where Tony's talking, like, hey, Peter, can I have a job? Since Peter has now kind of become a new kind of Iron Man slash Batman level where he's got his own company and kind of like there's a lot of other uh, Spider-Man, <laughs> Spider-People going around, and that's kind of cool. So that cuts to having Peter swing around Tokyo trying to look for Rudy, which I hope they do a little bit more, because Bendis is pretty good with Spider-Man. I mean, I really enjoyed him when he was doing Ultimate Spider-Man, both with Peter Parker and Miles Morales. So, hopefully some good dialogue with that, because I really liked his dialogue so far. When Tony's interacting with, like, Stephen, Stephen Strange, with Doctor Strange, Doom, anything like that, it's back to the good Tony. So, Spider-Man is doing that, and then we get a cut to Rhodey, who is captured by the Techno Ninjas that Tony had uh, encountered while tracking Madam Mask. So now he's like, well, what are you going to do? He's like, well, we're going to have you pretty much dead and have uh, Tony Stark hear your last dying breath. He's like, okay, good luck with that. And then she used some kind of her powers to take the suit off and kind of melt metal onto her, make it like even bigger suit. So it's like going to be interesting to learn where those powers come from. And at the end of the issue, we got a glimpse at um, this person who's in MIT. And they're evidently building a suit that is similar to Iron Man. So it's going to be interesting to see where that goes and where it kind of connects to the overall arc. I have really liked the direction that this has been going. It's been more of a fun Tony, kind of a balance between humor and seriousness. Because that's been sorely lacking. I'm also going to be interested to see what's been happening with Tony and Pepper since Superior Iron Man, where he went full dick mode, trying to go pretty much, I am doing bad things with extremists since I've been trying to stop everybody else from doing the same thing. But I'm really happy with how this has been handled, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes. So, like, subscribe, comment. Tell me what you think of this issue. Tell me what you think of my views on this issue. If you agree, disagree. And thank you for watching. And I hope you have a good day.